What is up everybody? This is Crystal. I need to discuss with y'all a serious situation regarding books and bookshelves and my OCD. Look, you see how, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera here a little bit, but you see how so far that what you can see, like the books on the bookshelf are arranged by height, right? And I also like to arrange by like author and like series or whatever. So here is my problem. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the camera down. I'm gonna move the mic back so you guys can see. I have down here the three, uh, the trilogy of the Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Great series, by the way, absolutely read. This is the first book, okay? It's a special, you only got it if you pre-ordered this book of theirs, completely unrelated to the series, but by the same authors, okay? But this book, goes with this series of books, okay? Here's my problem. Now you would think because it's so short, that's okay. But behold all this space on my bookshelf, right? So that means when I put this book here, it doesn't work because this one is too short and it throws it all off, okay? But so maybe then you say I could just move the books forward, right? And then that would work, right? Except I can't because Obsidio is so tall that now Aeon Rising doesn't fit there and now it's all off and my OCD explodes. It explodes, y'all. It's like, explodes, explodes. Can we just make the books the same size? Can we just, if even if they're, if they're in like a series, can we just make it the same size? And I understand that this one's a hardback, so maybe that one's on me, but this is also hardback, and it's not the same size as Obsidio, which is a hardback, so I'm just like, <sighs> We need to talk about books. We need to talk about the joy of fucking books because books are wonderful and we need to talk about them. Okay. Woo woo. Hey boo. Hey. Get your fade touch active listening on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. The first one we're going to talk about is, let me miss it if I can see, Memento. Memento. Memento was good. Okay. So Memento is a novella that you only got if you pre-ordered AOR Rising also by the same authors, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. We're going to talk about this book next. But it is part of the Illuminate trilogy. I have those down here. Y'all can't see them, but I have them. I've talked about them before. I've reviewed them before. You can go and check them out. They're wonderful. They're great. I absolutely recommend that everybody use them. Um, use them. Yes, use them. Read them. Whatever. Um, this book is a prequel. So it takes place before all the shit goes down on Carenza with Katie and all them. So this is pretty much about the birth of Aiden. And if y'all was around for my previous reviews on the Illuminate trilogy, you know that I have very strong feelings about fucking Aiden. Aiden is an AI that is aboard these ships and he is, um, what did I say about Aiden without spoiling anything? Aiden? Aiden is a complex character that I hate. Some people really like Aiden. I feel like I feel like Aiden is like soulless. Aiden is soulless. Like 100% Aiden is soulless. Because like people want to romance him, but soulless is fucking crazy. He wants to kill everybody, but people still want to romance him. That's Aiden. <laughs> like that's, that is, I'm not spoiling. I'm not spoiling yet. <laughs> that that's Aiden. So Memento, this this is the spoiler free part. I'll tell you when we get to spoilers. So Memento is the story about Liv. Uh, her full name is Olivia, and she comes aboard. I believe it's the Alexander. What ship is she on? Y'all know I don't do names. Y'all know. Y'all know. Yeah, she's aboard the Alexander. Um, and her job is to work with Aiden. Now this is before. Everything happens in Illuminae um, that causes air, Aiden to have an error. So there's, there is an error that occurs. So this is before the error. When, and her job is to just talk to him and learn about him and get him to learn more about humans 
and how to interact. And it's, you know, it's basically what you would do if you had a really intelligent AI um, that you were trying, you know, that you were trying to make uh, not more lifelike, but kind of understand human nature and, you know, and that sort of thing. It's, you know, working, it's, she, that's her job. Her job is to work with the AI. Um, and you find out a lot about her, about her background. Um, there's a super cute little kind of romance that happens with her and another officer on the ship. The dialogue between her and her friend is fucking hilarious. It's so good. Um, and it's, it's a really short read. This thing is only, I believe, like 84 pages. So it's just, it's a really, really, really short read. 82 pages, actually. It's only 82 pages. Um, the story moves really fast. Not too fast, but because of a novella, it's uh, a really good attention getter. You, I got really attached to Liv, um, even in that short amount of time that I got to hang out with her. So as, towards the end of this novel, I had a lot of feelings, and I was once again back in that sense of rage where I wanted to, at the end of this novella I wanted to take it and throw it across the room <laughs> because for reasons that I will not spoil for reasons that I will not spoil uh when you find out why the book is called Memento that's a like that's a total feels moment it's it's so well done and I love it and it made me want to go back and read the Illuminate trilogy again when I was finished with it that's how much I loved I loved Memento especially um, because it, it backs right into where Illuminae starts and it kind of overlaps like a teeny bit. It does kind of overlap a little bit, um, but it, it just kind of it very fluidly backs right into there um, and really just made me want to go back and, and read those three. I don't have time. I don't have the time to read. I don't have the time to reread books because I got so many other books to read and I just got shit to do. I just don't have time. Um, but I really, really wanted to. I really, really wanted to. Um, the beginning of Aiden was interesting. Aiden did not feel, and what I'm thinking about right now is like character development, right? Because Liv goes through this, Liv goes through this amazing journey in this book. And Aiden, he doesn't, it doesn't feel like he does. When you, fr it's subtle. And I feel like that's really, really well done because with Aiden, it's very, very, very subtle because when we first, when you first come across Aiden, he still has some of the qualities about Aiden that you know and are familiar with from reading the Illuminate trilogy. And then, or maybe not, if you, if you just, if you, if you first jumped into these authors with Aeora Rising, you might not. So that'd be a really interesting perspective. I would be really interested to talk to people who have never read Illuminae and actually read Memento first and then read Illuminae, what they think about Aiden, um, because I, I did it backwards. Um, but he's got a very subtle kind of character development because before there's a, a and this doesn't spoil Illuminae too much, but the Alexander gets attacked because that happens real early in this book. And... Aiden gets injured and causes an error in his software programming, whatever. Um, and so after that, he's different. And we get to see him before that happens and after that happens. That's why I said it backs right up into Luminae. And the differences are very, very subtle. Like you see how Aiden is and how he's going to develop before the nuke hits. And I almost wonder if he wouldn't have gone the same route, even if the nuke hadn't hit the ship and damaged him. So I, it's kind of one of those, like with, with a character like Aiden, like I'm not sure he wouldn't have ended up thinking and being the way he is as an AI, even if nothing had damaged him, just based on what I read in Memento. And maybe not. Like, may, maybe not. Because he... Aiden does some fucked up shit. I'm not gonna spoil it for y'all. But y'all should just prepare that when y'all... Y'all Aiden does some fucked up shit in those books. I'm just gonna... He does some... He does some fucked up shit. Shit is fucked up. Um... So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I... Yeah, I'm very... I'm very... I'd be very curious if he didn't... He wasn't always going to end up the way that he was. Very... Yeah, he just... I don't know. He's just kind of... You just got to read it. Aiden is just, I don't know. And I don't know if all AI would be like that or if it's just the way that he was programmed because even when Liv is trying to kind of teach, he's just creepy. Aiden is just creepy. <laughs> he is. Like, 
he's got a, but he's got this really awesome likability about him. So I understand why people might ship Aiden more than I understand why. I mean, I don't understand why people like Solus. Solus is just fucking annoying. Like I don't fucking, he's fucking crazy. I don't understand why people like Solus. I do understand why people would like Aiden. Aiden has a lot of layers and even he's got all this almost like childlike innocence about him when he's, um, when he's asking questions and when he's trying to learn, like you almost think that it's coming from this kind of uh, benevolent place of just trying to understand. But even that just has this, this undertone to it that you wonder if he's trying to, re you know, like if, if, if you're like an insect to him and he's just dissecting you or he's just probing at you just to gauge your reactions for and that's true he is but it's like his motivations behind those probings that are always a little suspect so he is in my opinion he's a brilliantly written character that they have just managed to kind of get his nuances that right and that might and that just might be my um characterization of him and kind of the feeling that I got from him but that's that's kind of how I interpret him af after reading that there is just something I don't know, very subtle about him. And that's why I'm really curious as to what, if you've never read the Illuminae files and you got Memento because you got Aeor Rising, I'd be very curious as to what your opinion on Aiden was um, after you got done reading this. And if, you know, that before Aiden and after Aiden, because I already had kind of a, a an, a, or I would have already had an opinion about him based on what he did in the Illuminae trilogy. Um, and I'm pretty sure that kind of colored my view of him, but even so, like, even like, I mean, this whole, I mean, the tagline is like, you know, some monsters are born, I was made. And I don't know that that's true. I, I don't know that I would agree with that statement. Mm, so let's do spoilers. <laughs> so I'm glad that's a, that's a good segue into some spoilers for Memento. So let me put, let me put my spoiler, let me put my spoiler alert up. Okay, let me put that up. So, <laughs> bruh, this book is rough. This book is fucking rough. It is rough. So the, the, the <laughs> I don't even know what, I have so many feelings. I'm so many. <laughs> I, okay, so <laughs> Liv in this book is, uh, so she comes on board the Alexander, it's her job, like I said, to learn. And her full name's Olivia, and she's kind of got some baggage where her dad died. Um, he had dementia. Um, and that's where the actual title of the book comes from, Memento, is she's got that tattooed on her, the words Memento, remember, um, I believe it's Latin, um, and she she's got a she's got some very interesting character quirks about her, and you find this you know this this progresses slowly that you kind of find out her history. But she ties like ribbons around her fingers, so she never forgets because her dad had dementia. She's got this fear that she's going to forget things, and because at the end he forgot her, like when she finally said goodbye, like he didn't even know who the hell she was, which is super fucking sad. Um, so it's called the book is called Memento af after Olivia's dad, which is fucked up and really, really sad because, <laughs> I mean, you find all this out because Aiden is goading her, which is terrible. Hang on, I'm jumping the ship, I'm jumping the ship, I'm jumping the ship. So, um, the book progress is like super cutely where, you know, when you first meet her, she's writing a letter to her father and then you realize she's writing a letter to her dead father, like she writes letters to her dead dad, which is fucking super sad. Um, you know, so it progresses with her, you know, writing letters, I'm on the Alexander, I'm so excited, blah, 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 you know, she gets aboard, she tries to start teaching Aiden. And one of the things that she teaches him is, uh, and I'm trying to remember what exactly the name of the experiment is called. The trolley prop. It's called the trolley prop. And I'll show you guys, hang on, I can just show you the picture. Because Aiden sends her this picture at a fucked up moment in the book. Hang on, I'm scrolling. And it's got this awesome, it's got that awesome Illuminate format where I have to like turn the page to read the words. It's so fucking cool. Um, but anyway. Hang on, I'm trying to find this trolley picture. The trolley problem picks uh... Okay. Uh, 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 that's the trolley problem picture. And it's literally the pic the 
the issue is, you know, what do you do? If there's a trolley and it's about to hit five people or one person and you're responsible for the lever, so you could kill five people or you could only kill one person, who do you kill? Um, and that's kind of the, philo the philosophical, like, whatever, morality kind of problem that she, you know, she, she puts to him. She puts at him. And um, they have an interesting kind of, you know, back and forth about that. Um, you know, you, you know, the, you know the, that justification of, you know, kill the many to save the few and the blah, blah, blah. And then he poses some interesting questions to her. He's like, because there's this officer on board the ship, um, Ethan Wolf, who she's got, a, you know, she's having this very cute, adorable fucking romance with. Their conversation is fucking adorable. It's so good. Um, she's like so socially awkward and she's so bad at the flirting stuff. And it's just, it's a great conversation. Um, but they're, um, they're having, they're having, her and Aiden are having this discussion about the trolley problem. And then he kind of, you know, he says to her, he's like, okay, so what if, you know, Major Wolf is the one and your dad is part of the five, then what do you do? And obviously she gets really upset about that question and, you know, and that sort of thing. And they also had the conversation about, um, I think, therefore I am. And I believe it was uh, Descartes who, you know, posited that uh, philosophical statement, you know, I think... Therefore I am? Yes. Uh, and they say it in Latin. And it's kind of after that conversation that Aiden starts thinking. And he's like, you know, I think. And then he's like, I. So does that mean I'm not a machine? I'm an I? Because at this point, Aiden does not refer to himself as an I. He refers to himself as a third person. So he's kind of aware that he's a machine, that his life does not necessarily... Um, is not as valued as much as a human life and, you know, and that sort of thing. So they're having, you know, they're having an interesting discussion. Um, and it kind of at the end of that, he's starting to think about, well, am I an I? And, you know, they also have the conversation too, within this conversation about, well, when, you know, Descartes made that statement, I think, therefore I am, it was so back in the day that he, you know, the philosopher had no idea that there would be a world with AIs in it. So that poses a very interesting question to us, you know, going to the future, like, you know, if, if a computer starts to think, is it a person? We you know what constitutes a person and then what ha what kind of a value do we put on that life? And it's, you know, it's deep and shit. So they have that discussion. And then, you know, even kind of before that, you can kind of tell she's kind of like, you know, Aiden is unsettling to her in the amount of personal questions that he asks. And he always says that he's just trying to learn. And I, and you get that, you get that he's trying to learn, but at the same time, again, it's, it's almost like, I think that he was just maybe programmed wrong, or I don't know how you could have programmed him the correct way, or if it's almost like you're trying to explain something to someone and they're taking it the wrong way. And what really comes to mind for me is that scene in Brightburn where the father is trying to explain to his son about, um, uh, you know, about when it's okay to like, um, to basically up to like masturbate when it's not. Um, and you know, he's trying to have, you know, that conversation and dad doesn't phrase it correctly. Like dad pretty much says to him that, you know, sometimes you'll have these urges and it's okay to act on his, or these urges is pretty much what dad says. And then doesn't give him like any kind of boundaries to that at all. And Brightburn takes it the wrong way and it gets hella dark. Um, so it kind of reminds me of that. This is why, by the way. Sorry, this is why. But it kind of reminds me of that because you just feel like when you're having these conversations with Aiden, he's just not, there's a level missing. And I think that's what comes with trying to talk to an AI is there's just, they don't have that humanity. It's all kind of very logical. Even though Aiden does display some moments of, I don't know if, empathy is the right word but maybe he does seem to have a capacity for it but you don't f see that of him until the you know deeper into the illuminate trilogy and even then it's on top of some really fucked up shit that he does and you could maybe justify what aiden does but those are those books but anyway um so back to memento so then everything on kresna happens the alexander gets attacked they get you know the ship gets shot Chaos ensues, big fucking problem. So Aiden gets injured in this, and now he's having errors, and now he starts referring to himself as an I. It's no longer, he's no longer referring to himself as a third person. Now he's ready to assume that he is a thinking machine. Like, it's, it's 
you're not quite sure just what Aiden thinks about himself as as far as like personality wise, but you do know that Aiden 100% believes that he is in the right, that he is doing the right thing, that he is doing the necessary thing and he is unwavering for that. And he 100% believes that he is doing the thing to protect the, um, that he is doing the thing that will protect the people on the ship because that is his directive, that he has to, that that's his job, right? To protect and maintain and take care of everybody on, on the ship. Um, so he does that. So that is, well, I wouldn't say he does that, but he kind of does it. But that is, that is, he believes 100% that he is doing that because he's so smart and he's an AI and he can calculate whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but by the time that, you know, so they're in the middle of all this chaos. They're running from um, this big corporation that's trying to hunt them down and, you know, blow them up. And it's just a very dire situation. But even other people on the ship that have interacted with Aiden at this point are like, there is something wrong with him and he needs to be shut down. And the commander on the ship, and he's like, are you fucking serious? Like, we need him. Are you sure? You know, he's outlining the, the severity of their situation, blah, blah, blah. And Major Wolf, the guy that Olivia is dating, he's like, there's one more, te there's one more test I can run. Let me go down um, into, you know, the area of the ship that's all fucked up. Let me run the test, do my little diagnostics. Um, and if I don't like what I see, then yes, even though we're in this shitty situation, I 100% believe you should shut Aiden down. So General's like, all right, cool, do it. So they go down there, uh, Major Wolf takes his crew to go down there to do it, and something happens. And it's, it's very, it's well, well written because the tension of that scene is great. And Wolf says, you know, right before they unfortunately die, Wolf says, did you hear that? And there's something indecipherable that nobody can kind of make out. And then, um, so I think, I think they get electrocuted, like the wire breaks or, you know, whatever. They, basically the whole team dies. Um, so this wrecks Liv, like Liv cannot, this does not do well for poor Liv's mental state. Like she just lost her dad. She really loved Wolf and now she's lost him too. So she's all fucked up. And then what happens is, um, you know, you know, Aiden being creepy, Aiden tries to kind of console her and she's not really kind of having any of it. And then he sends her out of the blue, I guess he arrows out one night. So he sends the commander a whole bunch of pictures of chess, which is really easy. He sends somebody else. He just he randomly emails people things. And for her, he emails her the trolley stop problem. The trolley problem, rather. And she flips the fuck out. She's like, yo, what is this? Because she'd already kind of suspected him, or I guess she, whatever. And he kind of like, he's like, I don't know. I'm sorry. You know, I aired out last night. That's my bad. Um... And she's like, you know, you know, did you have something to do with Wolf's death? And he's like, no, but he says, no, he's, he denies it. He says, no, he says, but if I did, it would be okay because Wolf was trying to shut me down. And Aiden goes on to list all the problems that they, that this crew is facing, right? And he's like, and I'm the only one that can help you out. So if you were to kill me, then you would be killing everybody on these ships Therefore, if I were to kill Wolf, it would be justified because he was trying to shut me down. And obviously this is the wrong thing to say to Liv because now Liv is 100% convinced that that is a confession of guilt from Aiden. And I find that scene super interesting because I'm not sure. I don't know if Aiden killed them. I kind of think maybe he did, but maybe he didn't. Maybe it just was an accident and that indecipherable sound they heard was not Aiden talking to them before he killed them. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. If Aiden did do it, I could see that. Um, but he says he didn't. And I don't, the reason I kind of hesitate is because Aiden doesn't lie. Like, he's not... He is not a liar, but he is still malicious. So there's there's kind of that. Um, so yeah, he he does not. I, I don't, and I, I'm trying to think back to the trilogy, the Illuminate Files trilogy. I don't believe there was ever an instance where he lied about what he did. Um, but then again, I don't know if anybody kind of came out and flat out asked him about some of the fucked up things he does in those books. 
Um, I, I'd actually, I'd actually, I'd, 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 I feel like I need to go back and maybe just skim them or something to see if I can remember. Um, I got asked my, I asked my girlfriend because she read them too, and maybe she would remember. But I don't remember him ever lying when asked about something outright. He seems to be too kind of into his own um, hubris. Is that the, how you say that word? Um, to lie. That he would be like, yes, I did it because, you know, whatever, I got to protect the fleet. And, you know, this motherfucker was in the way of me protecting the fleet, so he had to go. So I think when he tells her that he didn't do it, that is maybe true. But I still think that he should have been shut down. I want her. So poor Liv, but she loses her shit at this point. Like, she'd been trying to talk to another, like Sanchez, who you'll meet again in the Illuminae trilogy she was trying to tell people she was like yo look this is happening this person did this i mean this you know she was trying to say that aiden is off his you know his rocker there's something wrong with the ai and this was after wolf was killed too she's like i think aiden did it and that was before aiden even sent her the trolley problem and sanchez was like yo look we can't shut him down you're being irrational that's a big leap of logic that this ai would do this um, you know, didn't you have mental problems after your dad died? So it's kind of one of those situations, like, you know, something happened, so obviously she's crazy. They should have listened to her. They really, really, really should. Even if she wasn't right about Wolf and what Aiden did to him. Oof. Woo. Woo, 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 y'all. Woo. I mean, they, fuck, fucking Aiden, man. Fucking Aiden. But anyway, so at this point, after Liv has that conversation with Aiden, and flips the fuck out, she decides that she's going to take matter into her own hands in a very bad, unstable way. So she is like at full-on meltdown at this point. So she gets a gun. She goes into the server room where people are working. She fires. She kicks everybody out. She kicks her poor friend out. Her friend's like, oh, my God, Liv was wrong. Like, why are you doing this? It's terrible. It's like such a heartbreaky scene. She locks herself in there, and she just starts, like, fucking shooting at Aiden's server. She's trying to shut him down. And there are Marines now banging on the door trying to get in. And she's pretty much trying to, the conversation in there is really fucked up because she's trying to, to goad him. She's like, you know, prove to everybody that you're a murderer. You know, let the Marines in. You can do it, you know, type thing. And they're having a really kind of fucked up conversation where Aiden is trying to calm her down and get her to stop. But Aiden's like really bad at that. And he's talking to her about her father. So that whole conversation, it he just he hits her trigger points and he and, and you wonder if he's trying to calm her down or if he's literally just um uh egging her on more in a really fucked up way you know and and that and it's a it's a really awesome scene to read their dialogue and their back and forth especially because it's told from Aiden's perspective um and finally the marines get in and they kill her they kill her before before she can she can she can shut Aiden down and it's it's sad it's I felt so like I, it was like oh, oh my fucking god that was the moment I wanted to throw the book across the room because it was fucked up it was super fucked up um, and then after that after that um, Aiden writes a letter to Liv's dad that's how the book ends with Aiden writing a letter to to Liv's dad. And uh, basically says that your daughter taught me well. I will remember the lesson of the trolley problem. And he is pretty much using that to justify every action that he will take now. That sometimes if you do a fucked up thing, it's justified if it saves a lot of people. And that's uh, and that's how it ends. And that's that's how Memento ends. It's, it's fucked up. It's really good and it's really fucked up. It's re so that's why I'm like, I'm not sure that some monsters I was made is an accurate statement. I mean, I guess because Aiden was an AI and he was built, so yes. But, again, it's that kind of, just because of the way Aiden was, I feel like any kind of questions or philosophical discussions around that, he would have reached that conclusion because that's just who he is, which is a very interesting thing to say about an AI. But I, I do, I feel like even if that nuke hadn't hit the Alexander or if it, even if it still had, but hadn't damaged Aiden, I think he still would have turned out, and I think he still would have made the decisions that he made. I really, really do. I really, really do. So definitely go. I, I don't. If you didn't pre-order Aora Rising, you unfortunately will not get to read Memento. Find a friend who's got it and will let you borrow it because Memento is fucking awesome, and you should read it. You should definitely, definitely read it. So go, go and check it out.
go and get it. But it was it was good. It was just it was a brilliantly brilliantly written. I thought eighty two pages. It was good. So that is Momento. Read that shit. If you have it and if you can read it, if not, go find a friend who's got it. Do it. Then get you the Illuminate trilogy and read that shit because it's super good. Super good. Super good. All right. So that that's Momento. All right. Now let's jump in. You gotta jump into this. Sessie book right here. Pixel, did you finish it? Do you still have me muted? Did you finish? Did you finish a episode? Did you? Did you? All right. Ooh, that was thirsty. I said thirsty. Excellent. 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 Okay. I need you to get in this Discord so we can talk about this book together. Because I'm curious what you thought about it. So let's, we got to yes, yes, get in this Discord so we can talk about this book right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up, y'all. Do, 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 Okay, I don't remember names. Pixel's really good with names. Pixel's really good with names. She, she'll do she'll do the name thing a lot better. I'll be like, yo, what 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 that person's name and Pixel will know. Pixel will know. Oh, you can't do the but now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. Okay, no birthdays for you. No birthdays for you. Well then I will put the chat box up on the screen. Do, 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 do. I will put it. We'll put over here. We'll put on the screen. Okay. So let us talk about AOR Rising. So this book also by Amy Kaufman, Jay Kristoff, fantastic pair of authors. Amy Kaufman only writes YA. Jay Kristoff also writes adult novels as well. I'm a huge fan of his adult novels. I've only read The Never Night Chronicles so far. He's got a vampire series coming out. He's got some other adult books that I want to jump into at some point. There's too many books to read, y'all. Too many books to read. But anyway, so AR Rising is totally sci-fi. There are aliens. There are spaceships. There are a whole bunch of different planets. And it is basically... Uh, how do I summarize this book? It is about a squad that, how do I say this? It is about a squad of supposed peacekeepers. They are called the Aeora Legion. They are international or intergalactic peacekeepers comprised of humans and uh, two other races that I'm probably, that I'm definitely going to mispronounce. Uh, so I'm not going to try. Um, Two other alien races and their job, you know, it's a big kind of intergalactic world, very Star Trek-y, okay? But their job is to just to go around and do, like, aid and keep the peace. And there's, like, kind of a war going on with this one race of aliens that are very... God, what is the name of that Star Trek race that always be fighting? That warps a part of? Whatever they are. They, they Whatever. They're, like, the warlike race. They always be starting beef them. He did. He did carry the book. He was awesome. <laughs> Finn, Finn was good. Finn was good. Uh, the slid, the, what the fuck the name of them? The slither, slither something, whatever, it, whatever. They're just like this big warrior race or whatever. And they've got like different clans and one of their warlords is out in the galaxy causing havoc and he's a bad dude or whatever. So like galaxy at war, blah, 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 you know, shit like that. So this particular legion, <laughs> I mean, you're, the one of the main characters, his name is Ty, right? And he's this golden boy. He's good looking. He's super good at his job. He's supposed to be the head of the Legion. He's like A plus in his class, blah, blah, blah. Ty's the man, whatever. <laughs> and the way kind of it works is he's getting ready to graduate. And if you're at the top of your class, once you graduate, then you get to pick your squad, right? So if you're the first, it's kind of like, you know, when you're a gym class and you get to pick who you want to be on your team, basically. Well, that's kind of how it works. You know, if you're top of your class, then you get to pick the best. Well, some shit goes down where before his graduation comes up, he's supposed to go and pick his squad the next day, but he goes out flying and some shit goes down. So he doesn't get to pick his squad and he gets the rejects is basically what happens because he misses the draft. And that's kind of where they get the tagline. They're not the heroes we wanted. They're just the ones we could find. Although I don't think that tagline really fits this book. It doesn't... I, 
that tagline kind of feels like to me, like they're just the ones we could find as in you just pull some people off the street and they kind of got thrown into some stuff. Whereas, I mean, the squad that he gets stuck with are kind of the rejects because of disciplinary problems or do not play well with others or shit like that. They're not not trained and they're not super good at what they do, just that nobody else wants them for, you know, kind of whatever reason. So that's kind of, I don't know, whatever. Um, so we're not spoiling territory. Let me not spoil. Um, it's, this is a good book. So I don't want people to get it twisted because I'm going to critique this book a little bit. This is not a bad book. Okay. This held my attention. Like I started reading it when I went to New Orleans and then I came back home and I pretty much finished it in like a day. So I was like, I got like 80 pages in while I was on vacation. And then I came home and I pretty much finished it in the day. And the book is, uh, what is it? It's like 400 pages or whatever. Um, 470. So it's not a bad book. Um, it's very entertaining. The world feels really big. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying to delve into kind of no spoiler territory. Um, I can see how... Other people will relate well to these characters, I think. Um, there are some very funny moments in this book. I can see why they're making this book into a TV series. I think if they get the people who did the Hunger Games, if there's any kind of that level of involvement, then I think this will turn out to be a really good TV series because it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good story for it. It really is. It's got that kind of, um, you know, with the bad guys and the kind of the overall plot and what they're doing. Um, it's got, it's got a good TV vibe to it. So it should, I mean, I see this as being like a really, it could be a really entertaining CW show. I don't know that it would go, it'd be one of those shows that goes for like 20 seasons, but maybe like one to five seasons, you could probably carry it. You've got a strong feeling the second book will be very good. Okay. All right. I don't know if I have that. I don't, maybe, I don't know if I have, so... <laughs> <laughs> what else could I say about this book without spoiling it? Um, I feel like you should pick it up. Like if you're a YA fan, um, definitely, it definitely deserves, deserves a read. I would not say don't read it. Um, my problem with this book is not that it wasn't entertaining, not that it wasn't a good book. My problem with this book is it did not give me feelings. And that, that is literally when I finished this book, I felt dissatisfied. And it was hard for me to put a finger on my dissatisfaction about it because it checks off all the boxes, right? Like you've got um, great world building. Okay, you, you do. You've got, you've got really, really, really good world building. Um, they give you a lot of interesting information about the different races, right? Um, the characters themselves have some pretty interesting quirks and personalities about them. Um, Ari, the main kind of character, she's really important. She's the one that Tyler saves and the reason that he misses the draft and things around this book kind of revolve around her because she's got some interesting powers for reasons and, you know, um, but she kind of fell a little flat for me as a character and it's not that she's not likable. I don't know what it is about her that she's just not my favorite. She's just, and I don't really, if I had to have a favorite of this book, it would be Cal. Like I really liked him. He's this, um, he's part of the warrior race. It starts with an S that I'm not remembering saying right, whatever. Um, so they're like, you know, they're like bread for war. They're your, uh, the, the, you know, every squad is kind of set up like, um, like a raid squad. If you're a gamer, like you got your tanks, you got your DPSs, you got your healers, but there's some extras. You got a, a diplomatic person. You got the person who flies the ship. You've got the person who does the science and then you've got the person who fixes shit. So there's a whole squad compiled, compiled of these. I thought, um, Zila, this character, she's their science officer. She doesn't talk a lot. She, I thought was more interesting to me than Ori was. And she, I don't, she, <laughs> she doesn't say a lot. And I guess that's what makes her so kind of interesting to me. She's, um, even in the scenes that she is in, and I hope they get somebody really good to play her for the TV show, but even in the scenes that she is in, 
that she does not, what is the word that I'm looking for? I don't think like shine is it. She's just got something very, she's very withdrawn. Um, you're, you kind of get a sense of maybe why later in the book, like maybe, you know, whatever reasons of why she might be withdrawn. Um, but it's just that when she does speak and when she does insert herself into scenes, she's just awesome. She's just, she's just awesome. Like I did, I just, I just liked her character, even though she's, uh, she's kind of a background character in this book in comparison to like Ty, um, and his sister, Cat. No, Cat's not his sister. Scarlet's his sister. His sister, Scarlet, and Cat the pilot, um, the smart ass pilot or whatever. Um, even in comparison to like Cal. Um, Finn is the mechanic guy. He fixes the things. He's pretty funny. He's, he does. He's got a really, he's hilarious. He's got a pretty, he's got a pretty good, pretty good sense of humor. Really good sense of humor. So he does. He, uh, Pixel's saying that, they, that he carries the book. He kind of, yeah, he kind of does. He definitely, um, I don't know, he, he brings something to the table too. But it feels like the main characters of the story are, they just don't give me feelings. They don't give me a whole lot of strong feelings. So it's almost like this is a, it is a good book, but for me it is not a memorable book. It's not a book that left a mark on me like the Illuminate Files did, like the Nevernight Chronicles did, like kind of like the Hunger Games did. Those books, I don't know, they just, there's just something about them that kind of just leaves that, I don't know, that leaves something with you. This did not do that for me. This would just like, this isn't a book that I feel the need to go and reread again. I don't feel the need to like really sit around and geek out about it. Like I just don't feel that for this book. That's how it is for me in most books. Side characters are often your fave. Ness. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it just, I didn't, I just didn't have that with this. But it does, it, I mean, it checks off all the boxes of what like a good book should be. Like it checks them all off. So read it, get it. It's just, I'm not in love with it. I'm not in love with it. Even though there are some very interesting, um, what are the words? Some very interesting, the story, the plot itself, I find it pretty interesting. Like the villain, how that's uncovered, the big thing in this book that they kind of have to fight to kind of save the galaxy. It's pretty big and it's pretty badass. I dig it. That's pretty interesting to me. Um, but if the if something happened and the second book never came out, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, you know, ready to like, you know, punch babies and like set the world on fire. I'm not, I wouldn't feel for that. I wouldn't feel that. Not with, not with this book. So I don't even know how many demon goats to give it. I'd give it like, I'd give it like four demon goats. I gotta give it four demon goats because it's not a bad book. Like it's, it's genuinely not. It just, it does not spark up emotion in me. Um, It, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't leave me like that. It didn't. So, I mean, when the second book comes out, like I'll read it. Like, I'm not going to jump on that pre-order. Like if I'm in the middle of something and I'm busy, it's kind of be one of those, like I'll get to it when I get to it type situation. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I was coming off of kind of the high of the Illuminate Files because the Illuminate Files, both written by these authors are brilliant. It's, it's a brilliant series. It was super creative. Um, I had more of an attachment to the characters, not too much in Obsidio. Um, the main characters in Obsidio did not, I did not kind of resonate it with the way I did with the characters in Gemina and Illumine. Um, but even then that Obsidio was still a good fucking book. That was a good fucking book. I would not use those strong adjectives to describe AOR Rising. I just really wouldn't. In translation. And I, you know what? And I'm not trying, and I don't want to compare it because it's like, it's two different like books, right? Even though they're both like YA and sci-fi, still they're two, but it's just, it's just not as good. It's not, it's not, it's not as good. It's not as good. I feel like if you read, if this is the first thing you read of theirs and then you get to Illuminate, you'd be like, oh my God. It's like, it's like, if you read this and then Illuminate, it's an upgrade. If you read Illuminate and then this, it's a downgrade. And that's, but it's not a bad downgrade. It's literally like going from like a BMW to a Mini Cooper. 
Like, they're both made by BMW. But, like, the BMW is a better car than a... You see what I'm saying? Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, a four, I feel like a four scores because it's, it's, you know, it, it is. It's, it's, it's a good book. It's, it's got some... It's, I mean, the things that I that I kind of had an issue with, um, we'll get into spoiler sections. So let's do, let's do spoilers real quick because I don't I don't have too much more to say about it because I just... It's not feelings. I, I have no feelings. No feelings. All right, spoilers. Wait, what am I moving? I'm moving the chat box. Okay, spoilers. The one thing about this book that kind of, I was like, eh, is the romance between Cal and Ari feels weird. And it's, and so that's another one that's kind of hard for me to articulate because I get him, like his side of it, I find to be really interesting. I like that he kind of, like when he first meets her, like she tumbles out of a crate because she got smuggled onto their ship because they're trying to get her away from some bad shit that's happening. And it's kind of like one of those love at first sight things for this poor dude. And his race is cool because his race is kind of one of those that they like mate for life type shit. So like he's, it's called like the pull. So when he sees somebody that he really like likes or whatever, like that's it. And then he gets all these like fucking feelings or whatever. He like, he gets like lots of feelings and he's a warrior too. So it's like, he's adorable in how he expresses or how he tries to express like his emotions and liking her and like whatever. So that shit's cute as hell. So it's not him. I feel like it's maybe rushed is kind of the right word. I almost feel like she shouldn't have found out in this book that he liked her. And I'm not really one for dragging out romances 25 fucking seasons because that shit's tired as fuck. But this one felt weird. And maybe it was supposed to kind of feel a little awkward, but it was one of those where I kind of called, like I kind of felt like as soon as she found out that he liked her, then she's, she was going to, you know, maybe kind of like him back type situation. And that didn't. And it's weird. It's kind of like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the romance. And if you ever played Detroit Become Human, like the weird romance between Marcus and what's her face. It's just, it, I don't, it's just, it's just weird. It came off really weird to me because from his perspective, like I said, I get it. It's cute. It's adorable. Like, he's fucking hilarious. Like, he's, like, so protective of her. Like, he loses his shit when, like, people hurt her. It's funny as fuck. Um, but he's acting like a jackass to her. Like, he doesn't look at her. He kind of ignores her. Like, when he does kind of talk to her, he says, like, rude shit. And you get it from, like, he doesn't mean it the way it comes across. But it still comes across that way. So, from her perspective... It's like this big crazy warrior dude who is just like randomly loses his shit and beats people up, but treats her like, but like, is like a jerk to her. So, but then you, you know, so it's like the little boy who comes up to you in kindergarten, like pulls your hair, <laughs> but then you find out he really likes you type of situation, right? But he still pulled your hair. So, <laughs> so I guess it's her reaction to it that felt a little forced to me. Like, I think I would have liked if more if she was kind of like, whoa, too much. I'm going to need you to, I'm going to need you to take, like, take your stalker ass over here because you're kind of like a stalker and I've got other shit going on with, like, these powers and the fact that I can't remember shit and whatever and, you know, I pass out and then I wake up and I'm blowing people up and making people explode. Yeah, like, this is real. Like, her powers are for real. <laughs> so, the fact that they get, like, real, like, cute towards the end and I don't know that just felt it it felt off it felt like the kind of pacing of that felt off a little bit and she um I'll be right there and you know she kind of she does I mean she she doesn't do it like she doesn't just dive right in and be like oh my god I love you too she doesn't say that she kind of she's like you know let's take it slow let's kind of you know give me a chance to get to know you um so she opens up to him but it's still I don't know, it just felt weird to me it kind of felt like a a, a a trying to smoosh these together. Like I almost wish that you would have, like we'd have gone like another book and a half before she found out that he liked her with him just acting all fucking hilariously awkward, which would be hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, wait, I have to put you speak. Nope, I can't. 
can't hear you. Hang on. <laughs> what up, miss? Hi, girl. Hi. All right, hang can on. Can you like hear me? Settings. Too many windows. Too many windows. Wait. Okay. Now speak. Hi. Okay, wait. Say it again. <laughs> okay, now people can hear you. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Babe, what did you think about this romance? So the score I gave it, mm -hmm. you were more generous than I was. Actually. Oh, really? Really? What did you think? What did you? What score did you give this book? So on Goodreads, I actually just did it. I gave it um, a three. Ooh, you gave it a three. Why did you give it a three? So I wish I could actually give it like a three point five, but mm -hmm. uh, Goodreads doesn't do that for some reason. But I do like it. Mm -hmm. I will read the second one. Mm -hmm. But I've read too many books where it sets up the romance like that, where um, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, okay. So I'm glad it wasn't just me that was like, mm -hmm. this is weird. Like, <laughs> actually, I am reading, still reading a series now where it's doing that with like two different people. Oh, God. Why? So, yeah. yeah. It's not even why. It's an adult fantasy and it's still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> And I feel like there's a way to do it where it could work, but this is not the way. This mm. is, I, 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 and I really, and I really think it's coming from her end because I like him. Like I like Cal a lot. Mm. Like I get him. She's weird. She's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. It feels like, well, how long was a. Uh... Ori out like two hundred something odd years. Yeah, two hundred years. Two hundred years. She was. She was. She was sleeping. Two hundred years. She I was feel floating like out in the when you wake up space. from that, you need a little bit more time before launching yourself into something like that. That's true. And I almost like maybe we have too much of an adult perspective on it. Like maybe if you're what are they like sixteen, seventeen or some shit. Like maybe when you're sixteen, seventeen. I don't. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> That's probably what our problem is, because, you know, she has that going on. So why would you remotely have time for this? Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's and I think I would have liked her to have a whole different reaction, too, because it's not just like I get teenagers, hormones, whatever. But there's a lot going on. Like, there's a lot. Like, aren't they like on that planet where she was supposed to have gone with the creepy, like, plant mm -hmm. shit when he finally mm -hmm. is like, oh, my God, I love you. <laughs> like, then it happened, like, right work. around there. <laughs> right. So, literally, like, <laughs> the entire galaxy is after you. You land on this fucking planet where literally, like, it has, like, I don't know, this weird, like, plant shit is taking over the planet and it's got, like, a consciousness and it just wants to, like, consume everything and turn people into, like, these crazy plant zombies that just want to murder, whatever. It's weird. It's like this whole, like, crazy hive mind thing. Um, so you literally, that's what happens. Like, you crash land on this fucking planet, shit's going down, and then this motherfucker all of a sudden feels like, now I'm going to drop my feelings. And maybe I'm getting the timing wrong, but I'm pretty sure it happens, like, right around there. <laughs> And mainly my, my, it's weird because like, I like some things and I don't like things. It's more mm -hmm. like a neutral feeling. But my main thing is the writing. Mm -hmm. I know they can do better. Mm -hmm. And um, the, you know how like Illuminate does it too when you jump around with the character perspective. Mm -hmm. I didn't like how that was done in this one. Really? It wasn't as smooth. It was not. Okay. 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 I could see that. that didn't bother me too much. Because like I probably wouldn't mind it as much if the writing was better mm -hmm. because with the characters they're too stereotypical. Because you got your grouchy That's one, you got what your it smart is. one. Thank you, you have the awkward, not sheltered one, but the one that's been through some shit. You've got yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The emo one, all that. Yeah, you re they are. They are. They are literally five stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then you have Ori, who I just don't know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for our take. That is, they didn't write as good. They didn't write as good this time. That's what's bothering me. <laughs> that's, 
But it's not. And you know what? That's an interesting thing to say to them because it's not bad. Like, I feel like if this is, if you have never read Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff before, and this is the first book of theirs you picked up, you might be okay. Mm-hmm. Like Absolutely. I, yeah, yeah, I feel like you'd be like, okay, these are good authors. Like, I'll read some more of their shit. But if you've gone from this, from Illuminated this, mm-hmm. mm. like, even <laughs> like that what the first quarter of Never Night I read before I had to return to the library. I greatly enjoyed that. Oh, it's so good. Oh my God. Never Night is so, yeah, I know he can do better. I know oh, yeah, they he both can. can. Yeah. I read one of just Amy Kaufman's books and she did great. Hmm. Maybe this was rushed. Maybe they, they just, maybe this was a little rushed. I feel like it was because when I looked and I actually did like a little bit of, um, when I was trying to relieve my saltiness earlier from all mm-hmm. the shit, mm-hmm. I was doing research on like Instagram, like how far away did they start advertising or arising in between their other stuff? And at the time when they were writing it, um, Jay Kristoff was writing, Amy was writing, and she had her personal project going on, and she also had um, another project going with another author, not just with Jay. Mm, gotcha. So I'm thinking maybe just too much. They were both too much a on bit their plate. They were stretched yeah. thin. Yeah. I feel like if they were focusing all their efforts directly on or rising would have been better because that's how Illuminate was made. That was the only thing going on at the time. Mm. Yeah, they do. They've got some, I know just from his schedule, his schedule is super busy. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he's got a lot going on because um, he's got the vampire books coming out. I believe he just, he's getting, I know Dark Dawn is already, I know Dark Dawn's finished. That's the yeah. third book of the Nevernight Chronicles, but he was doing a lot of tweeting about how he's, you know, autographing and signing mm-hmm. books and going on to whatever. I just, yeah, you're right. It's just, um, it's just not their best work. But I find the story really interesting. Like I like, I'm more interested in this, in the, this plot. Like I like the um the natural folds like the folds are like they're like tears and like they're like space and it's how you basically mm-hmm. like instead of like you know jump you know the whatever what what is that called fucking what's the word i'm looking for jump. Oh, I don't remember. you know what i'm saying though like the yeah. leaps you go through fucking space you get you know places super fast um in this book it's called the fold right where you literally get from one end of the fucking galaxy to the other and there are man-made ones and then there are natural ones Mm -hmm. So there are natural ones around all these planets where this cosmic evil entity is kind of poised to take over. And it's literally like this plant thing. I don't know any word for it. It's like, I don't know, it's like if Mother Nature was evil and wanted to kind of take over everything and and it's got like a hive mind. So once it like infects you, um, then you become part of the rest of them and you lose yourself, but you're still kind of, there's like pieces of you left but you're more consumed with the hive and it just wants to like eat everything and like take everything over. And it's poised to like go through all these natural portals or whatever. And Mm -hmm. it's infested. Like it's kind of cool. It rolls deep because it's already like in, it's got, it's like crazy little creepy plant agents infested in like the secret service type situation of the Terran defense forces. And it's probably got places in all the other, in the two alien, other alien races. So it's cool. Like I find that, that's interesting. That's interesting. Oh yeah, like I love I love the atmosphere they're making. All that was good. Um, mm-hmm. I give it props for that. It just the characters all my man. issues is the writing of the characters. And like I have, um, if I had to choose a favorite of them, I'd say Scarlet. Really, you like because Scarlet? I, like, I do because I like the diplomatic nature and everything. But it mm-hmm. makes me mad she wasn't built up. Even no, she, she was pretty flat girl. too. Exactly. Like, um, then you got Kat, who was basically just there to make the star trio and was basically the unrequited love victim thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? That was kind of well done and kind of not well done. That was okay. That was, that was, that was, that was I, that, I didn't really ship them. I didn't really ship anybody in this book, to be honest. No. I, I, I wasn't really, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't have. I did not have an attachment to these characters. Like, like even in yeah. Obsidio, my attachment really wasn't to, what was her name? Like Robin? I don't remember. Whatever. The, the, the main characters in like oh, Obsidio. Ash. Ash yeah. I didn't have a real attachment to them. That little kid. I love yes. that little fucking kid. Mm-hmm. 
That I remember that little kid from Obsidio. Oh my god! And I, I li- me and that little right, that little kid was what's up. Like, mm-hmm. and I remember what stand the um the soldiers in Obsidio. Yeah. I remember the Bitech soldiers. They stand out to me. Like I have like those are the things that kind of stand out to me from Obsidio. And I think Obsidio was the weakest out of the Illuminate trilogy, but it was still fucking good. Like it was still what? it was still fucking good. My thing with um, Obsidio is it adds like a different aspect that I think uh, was refreshing for the trilogy, but oftentimes I just ignore the um, I can brain ignore the newer stuff and just focus on the main cast. That we know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good. I think maybe you know what the TV series might be better than the book. To be honest, if they get the mm-hmm, right people yeah. to play these, because they're I think the actors will be able to give some life to these characters that the book did not give them. I really, I really do. I mean, they, I mean, they, I feel like Amy and Jay laid a good blueprint for something. And then now if you get really good screenwriters, script writers who can focus all their energy on this, I think you can really elevate the story into something special because kind of as it is right now as a book, it's like, I mean, it's good. (laughs) <laughs> that's literally i'm like it's it's good <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say about it it's like it's it's, it's good you should i mean you could pay money I, for it like i do should. really think that the second book will be better i have that feeling you have that feel okay yeah okay it, maybe i don't know maybe like a trial and error this one felt like okay no pun intended your face tells me it's not that good. You know what, mess? It's not even that. It's n- I'm just not excited about it. <laughs> like I'm just kind of like I'm kind of like ambivalent about it. Like if you got a really long to read list, this would not be the book I would tell you to go and get. <laughs> like it just. I mean, like if you're gonna read something from Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, Aeora Rising is not it. Like it's not like not this one. I mean, like. <laughs> Exactly. It does. And see, I feel bad saying this because it did hold my attention. Like this, mm-hmm. I didn't, I literally, I spent the day reading because I wanted to see what happened. So it 100% held my attention. But then I got to the end and I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, eh, all right, go do your adventure. Yay, adventure. <laughs> like if they killed this entire squad, and there was a whole new cast of characters in the second book, would not be sad. Yeah, not really. Mm-hmm. I'd be, I'd miss Cal a little bit and Finn, but other than that, I'd be like, yeah, everybody else can go. It's fine. I, th- th- that's fair. I would miss uh, Finn. Yeah, yeah. And I guess you gotta have, you fucking have to have Ori. Ori, whatever the fuck her name is, because she got powers. But she was like, meh. She know what it was. She right. It, you know what you said. Stereotypes. That's it. They're yes. written the way they're supposed to be, exactly. and that's and that's literally like she's. You know, she 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 checked off all the boxes. She was like, okay, hero going through some shit. You know, has to kind of push herself. You know, has like issues. You know, from her past or whatever, and has to try to be brave in certain moments and whatever. You know, she, they it just it just checks all the fucking little boxes that you're supposed to check of characters, and that's pretty much it. It lacked like you can use stereotypes as like a baseline, mm-hmm. but work off of them. Yes, yes, yes like, yes. and I keep comparing them, but you can't help but compare when they're both YA and both sci-fi. True, <laughs> true, true, true. Um, Nick and his family in Gemini. Oh fucked yeah, up. yeah, fucked up. They're, they're awful people. They're terrible, but you love them. They are awesome people. I forgot they were awful people. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nick is great. <laughs> I mean, they did some terrible shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They were. Nick was great, though. I love Nick. Oh, my God. Nick and Hannah were so good. They're like my favorite characters ever. I love it. I think I love Hannah so much because she's a fucking ninja. I love Hannah. <laughs> I love Hannah because she just spent because when you first meet her you she's think she's right beginning. you'd like she's like the spoiled rich like you think she's like head cheerleader type shit mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden she's badass <laughs> and then she turns into this fucking like i will fuck you up ninja and she's just great <laughs> and that, even that was done well because mm-hmm. 
a lot of people would use the, you know, Mary Sue thing, but they literally tell you why she could do that stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, she, yeah, yeah. Her dad trained her, so it was awesome. Like, she was still, mm-hmm. like, this prissy he whatever. He sent her for school for But it. he literally, like, she was that person who had training. So, yeah, no, she was great. No, she mm-hmm. was not a Mary Sue. She was fucking fun. Yeah, there's nobody like that. There's nobody in AOR Rising that got me excited like that. I just, Like, even the villain didn't get me. And I was kind of like, at the end where that dude with the head, um, what was his name? His name started with like a P, I think. The head GIA agent that had infiltrated and was chasing them around the galaxy turned out to really be her dad all infected. I was kind of <laughs> like, that's so fucking tired too. I get yeah. why they did it because I feel like, again, it's like that check it off the boxes, right? The villain should have a connection to her so you care. But I didn't yeah. care. <laughs> I, that just felt I'm so fucking tired of that we're like do you get to that reveal at the end and the villain turns out to be related to your hero and oh my god I am like I'm just I'm over it I'm so fucking over that I'm just, why please stop please stop dude please dear authors stop just <laughs> just stop doing that just um we're um like does is it necessary is it really like can you not find another way to give have an emotional gut punch than then the villain has to be related to the oh my god are you really my baby daddy like just stop <laughs> I'm just I'm so tired of it <laughs> I'm just like it just doesn't hit anymore I'm just like what whatever I'm just <laughs> to, to me like even before that trope was used up it didn't hit me even then because one in a million chance that happens to happen to you, really? Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I'm trying to think of an emo- Like, I'm all for, like, emotional gut punches. Like, I like like in that scene in Obsidio where you think that little kid is dead and I wanted to throw the fucking book across the room. Oh, I started to cry. That emotional was Emotional awesome. gut punch. That was awesome. That was fucking, that was, that was some good shit in, um, fucking, I'm spoiling, spoiling, I'm spoiling the Illuminae files, you're war- I'm spoiling it, I'm spoiling it, in Illuminae, where you think Ezra is dead, emotional, like, yes. I was fucked up, and I wasn't even, it was cool when he wasn't, I was half, I was hella happy, so there's a way you can have emotional gut punches that are not these tired ass tropes of, you find out the villain is your fucking father, or your whatever, like, it, I don't know. And that was like another cause to be angry at Aiden because like Fucking Aiden He he Fucking knows that Aiden. Ezra's fine but tells her he's still on the ship to get her over there and then says that he's dead so she'll Aiden stay. does lie. Thank you. He's a fucking liar. Okay. <laughs> That's what I couldn't remember. When I was reviewing Memento, I was trying to figure out if there was an instance where Aiden actually fucking lied about something. And that is a... You're right. He No, he does. He fucking lies. Mm. That was... Yeah, that was a legit manipulative lie. <laughs> he fucking does lie. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Now that I'm remembering that... All right, fam. Go back to what I said in Memento. Yup, he did it. He fuck. I'm not gonna spoil it, but he fucking did that shit. Fucking lying ass liar, Aiden. He did that shit. Babe, you gotta read Memento. It's so good. I know. <laughs> you gotta read Memento. It's so good. All right, so you give it three. I mean, I'll give it four just because maybe I should give it three. Now I'm thinking about maybe thinking. I mean, I want to give it four stars just because, like, it's it's what a book should be. It's just not a special book. I gave it a three because, for me, the stereotypes of the char- characters resemble that the book was rushed and didn't get the time that maybe it should have. Mm, I feel like your review is fair. I feel like and that's I, really fair. I feel like I, 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 you're convincing me to take away a demon goat. Well, it's like, I don't have, like, I would probably reread it again mm-hmm. just to catch any weird things, like if the second book comes out. But I don't hate the book. It's fine. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not their best. I think all authors have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. I feel like that. I mean, but you know what, though? If the worst thing you put out as an author is fucking AOR Rising, you're doing good. Because it's not. Yeah. yeah it's not <laughs> like, it's not, it's not like I am number four. That book is terrible. I couldn't even finish it. That book is terrible. The, the is movie is pretty good. 
but the book is terrible. And the movie isn't even that good. It's kind of like cheesy, like YA type CW movie, but I enjoy it. Like, I think I enjoy the movie I Am Number Four. I like the concept of it. I think the story is really good. The book, I couldn't even finish it. <laughs> I'm like, let me get this book because you know the book is better. Lies. The book is not better. The book is not better. And that is sad. What's up, kid? So, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I feel like you've articulated well why I was disappointed with this story that I could not articulate for me. I have been convinced 3 Demon Ghost is good. But again, <laughs> I feel, you know, it's almost like when you give a book three stars, it's like because it's not good, and that's like, it's good. Just, eh. You'd illuminate. <laughs> it, exactly. It's like, I feel bad for saying that, because that, honestly, that's not fair. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's actually a really sucky book review, if you think about it. Yeah. Because we're very spoiled. So really, oh, so spoiled. someone who's passing by and, like, stumbles upon the review can disregard it when they hear it's a good book it's just not so and so true true so true, true, true. you know what i mean <laughs> true 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 yes 100 percent. 100 percent. so you think the second book will be better maybe i feel like they're gonna have a lot more time to sit down and plot maybe maybe we'll see We'll see. I feel like they've got a busy schedule still. So I hope I hope they give the second book the attention. I don't feel like they gave this one. So, but again, I'll read it. Like you said, I'll read it. When the next one comes oh, yeah. out, I'll definitely, I'll, and I'm going to check out the TV show. I'm excited for that. Kid says it's an author. I don't care how many stars as long as I get a review at this point. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> You're like, whatever, just review it. Even if you don't like it, just review it. <laughs> So that's it. That's it for our book. So Memento was only if you pre-ordered it or rising. If you have a friend who has it, get it. You can't have mine. This is mine. Pixel can read mine, but you can't have it. You're just beat. Um, but oh, it's, thanks, it's, babe. Yeah, you, it's, well, we're going to live together, babe, so I know it's fine. <laughs> I know where you live so I can get it back. I don't give people my books. My friend Jay be, like, doing book giveaways on, like, Twitter. I'm like, I'm not giving away my book. It's your own fucking book. Uh, and this is... The cover is better than the book. That's real talk. That's terrible, but it's true. Oh my God, this cover is so good. Look at this cover. <laughs> this is such if a anything, good- If anything, the book was amazing eye candy. Fuck it. Yeah, it was. This is such a good fucking book cover. The It's not as good as, like the book cover is better than what's inside. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, I don't regret it. I said what I said. I said- what i said i said it okay my cover suck <laughs> they got a good cover artist for this because i feel like that really accurately um displays what ori looks like because she's um yeah. she's 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 part chinese right she's half chinese mm -hmm. so yeah i think the the artist whoever did that book cover was phenomenal that's that's amazing that is amazing book arcs that's so good it's pretty it is it's very pretty it's very, very pretty. All right, fam. I'm going to take a quick break. This was your book reviews with Crystal. Um, what am I reading next? I cannot read V.E. Schwab yet because I told Pixel I'd read it with her. So I'm not allowed to read that until we're she's gonna ready. We're going to buddy read it. Yes, we're going to buddy <laughs> read it because she got mad that I finished Aura Rising before her. When are we going to buddy read it? Um, I am actually, I when I finished um, Aura Rising, I started reading... Um, the other book you got me, The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab, so... Ooh, you're in... Okay, I'm so you're... A, one of her other books. I'm about 50-ish pages in. Okay. It's quick read, so I should be done with that, like, in a couple days. Okay. So after that, we can start reading um, what do I want Gathering to read of Shadows. Next? Now I'm trying to decide, what do I want to read in between... Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna read another YA book. I'm gonna grab this book my sister got me. She told me to jump into. So this is we're gonna. Re I'm gonna read this next. This is Girls of Paper and Fire by James Patterson, actually, which sounds James Patterson presents. Maybe James, who wrote this? Natasha Nagin, Nagin, who actually wrote the fucking book? That. Who wrote the fucking book? Did James Patterson write it or Natasha write it? Did James Patterson? Nope, Natasha wrote it. Natasha wrote it. There is a foreword by James Patterson. I don't know why, but there is. Okay, whatever. Uh, so we'll read. <laughs> so we will. We'll read this one next. We're gonna try this one. I'm gonna. I'm not a huge fan of YA fam. I'm just be real with you. I prefer adult books. Um, but 
I trust my sister's taste in novels, and she gave this to me, so... If Eventually, it holds... I'll get you to read the Savage song, because that was damn good. Was it? Okay. Who wrote that? Uh, B. Schwab. B. Schwab. Okay, cool. I like her. I like her. Uh, this isn't a long read either. This is like... What is this? This is like 378 pages, so I should get through this pretty quick, too. Ah, I dropped it! No! <laughs> So yeah, I'll read, I'll jump into that one next. So I got some, I got some other things in the pipe. Like we've got, um, so we've got A Gathering of Shadows that me and Pix are going to read together. The third book in the Never Night Trilogy comes out in September. I cannot fucking wait. Oh my God, I need to know how this ends. Um, I'm not doing shit in September, but as soon as I get that book, fuck <laughs> off. I'm reading it. I need to know how that ends. I need to know. I have this. Uh, the skin map, which just looks interesting, and I liked the idea of it. So we're going to check that one out. Um, and then I have a Terry Goodkind, Goodkind book. I feel like at some point I need to read him because I'm a sci-fi author, and I should. So I got this one, which is like right up my alley that we need to read. And I have a Dean Coots book that I've been sitting on for a hot minute that's gonna be scary and fucked up. Get some horror in your life. I know, I need to get my horror back. So this one, What the Night Knows, will 100% be fucked up. Um, and hopefully not anticlimactic because I love Dean Coots, but sometimes he's super fucking anticlimactic. Oh my God, it drives me crazy. <laughs> it drives me fucking crazy. Oh my God. I cannot vouch for it. I just had two copies. No, I've not read that book. Don't put that shit on me. All right. Well, I'm just saying, mess. You got good taste, but well, whatever. If I hate it, it's on you. <laughs> eh, sort of true. Eh, all right, we'll find out. We'll 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 find out if this is uh, if these are any good. If these are if these are any good. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break, fam. I'm gonna grab a snack. Uh, when we come back, I need to dive into this Sonarchy script real quick and put my ideas down on paper and get that done. And then, baby, you wanna play some division? Yeah, I'm done for that. Yeah, all right, let me do this script stuff real quick, and then we'll jump into Division. So break first, then I'll do that, and then we'll do some gaming. Love your faces, fam. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. 